Hey guys, so now we're going to be making uh, another type of fence. You can either do this with a picket fence, or uh, for this instance, in this one I'm going to be doing like a wrought iron fence kind of deal like this. Um, I might also do a gate area for you guys with more of a bend of extremely long a curve. So let's get started with that. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start off with the cube. You can start off with the cylinder. It's completely up to you. And for this, if you're starting with the cube, go over to your inputs and I'm going to do... Just bring them all the way down to one by one by one. We don't need anything now. We're just going to be extruding up and uh, scaling in. Let's go ahead and move your guy up to the base of our grid or somewhere along there, doesn't really matter. And then I want you to get it into about the width that you want your thing to be. So I'm going to go ahead and scale in on these two axes because I'm going to want this longer. So between <coughs> the red and the blue, the x and the y axes to scale in using that one. And then I'm just going to use the green to scale up a little bit. Maybe to get something like that. So that looks good to me. So if we look, if I bring back my other one here, this has a kind of pointed detail that I want for kind of like the old wrought iron fences had. <coughs> I'm realizing I'm working really small. Um, so I can just blow that up to be a little bit bigger there. And what I want to do is uh, create that circular part, the pointed part at the top. So you can go ahead and surround select the corner edges and go ahead and hit a bevel and then it will create more of a circular shape if you want it that way. Um, for now I'm just going to keep the square shape, but it's another way you could get the more circular shape with just working with this one face. So go ahead and go into your face mode by holding down the right click key and dragging down to face. Go ahead and click on that top face there. And we're going to do a control or command E to extrude. But we are going to just scale it in because we need that inner part. So go ahead and hit R to scale. And then again we want the um, X and Z axes to come in. Then go ahead and do control E to extrude again because if we were just to hit W to move this up it's going to move it into the point. Um, so if you're looking for a picket fence way you could just do it that way as well. Um, but we are doing the rod iron. So control E to extrude up so that we can hit the right key. Uh, got a little bit there. Control E again so we can size out um, just like before. R to scale. Scale it out. Control E to extrude up again. And then R to scale into our point. Okay. So now you have that basis of kind of your wrought iron fence. I'm going to go ahead and hit my edges and uh, do the circular part down here. So just surrounding selecting my edges and go to bevel just to get kind of a more circular shape along those. Getting in some segments. So in edges, I can also create something so we can have kind of a point out on these guys. Go ahead and hold down your shift and right click after clicking an edge um, and do it insert edge loop tool. Now if I wanted to create the little point out, I could go ahead and drop in the insert edge loop tool. Um, looks like mine's already on. Uh, but when you go in and insert it, it allows it to move around unless you have your tool already set up. 
So go ahead and shift click again and go ahead and pull out the dialog box, the little pop out to bring this up. So if you were in the relative instance and you brought this down, then you you know, you'd have to guess to be directly in the middle. That's pretty good, but maybe I'm slightly off to one side. So go ahead and in this tool setting, uh, drop down to the multiple insert uh, multiple edge loops. And this will have the equal distance multiplier pop up and go ahead and just type in one because we only want one. And you can go ahead and pop it in there and you don't have to worry about guessing. Remember the insert edge loop tool will insert the edge loop perpendicular to the edge that you clicked on. So if I click on this edge, it is uh, on my vertical edge, it's going to go horizontally. If I click on my horizontal edge, it's going to go vertically. And then go ahead and put your relative distance back on just so um, you aren't like me who is stuck. Okay. So now we can go into our vertex mode and Q to quit your tool so you don't keep dropping edge loops. Go ahead and select those new vertices that we made on the bottom. Go ahead and hit R. And then we can scale them out to give it more of um, that kind of look. Or you could just do one. It doesn't really matter. It's what kind of fence you want to make. But for me, I want this to be kind of uh, flatter on one edge, I should say. So I'm going to go into object mode, hit R to get into my scale, and just scale it in on that side. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, for anybody who's making a picket type fence, go ahead and create that one too. Uh, so again, starting off with a cube and starting off with one in our inputs. Go ahead and size it up to what you want your 2x4 uh, picket fence to be created out of. And then go ahead and go into your edge. We need to drop that middle edge loop again like before. So click an edge and then hold your shift and hold your right click and pull out the insert edge loop dialog box again. Go ahead and click on the multiple edge loops. Mine was already set in one from last time. And I'm going to drop it in on the horizontal line so I make a, a vertical line down the center clicking back on the relative distance from edge again so I don't have that in Q to quitting my tool so I don't create a million edge loops. So now what we want to do is we want to create the top point of our picket. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and grab that middle edge there so you can just click on it because we're still in edge mode and none of our edges are now selected besides that top one. Go ahead and press W to move and just bring it on up. And there you have your picket fence, uh, picket type of shape. I'm going to move that over there. So back to my wrought iron fence, uh, or any fence that you have here, actually. So if you are have your pumpkin scenes that we were creating before, your fall scenes, or whatever you were creating your fence along, uh, make sure that you are getting your fence in relative size to what your scene is originally created in. So if I was doing this and I brought in my um, brought in my lantern that I have here, um, dependent on how high you want it raised. If you were doing a picket, maybe you just want it in the ground. But make it relative size to what you have because it will be harder once as we've created all of these to then edit them maybe taller or larger um, because if we go larger it could decrease the value of it in between. So go ahead and just stop the video and get it to the size that you want your fence or if you're just doing the exercise we can continue on. Okay. So now you have your fence in the size that you want. Right now I'm going to work over in this picket fence guy. Um, and we're going to, you know, duplicate them. Uh, I want you to go up into Edit first, Delete by Type in History, and then Modifies and Freeze Transformations. 
Now what you've noticed over here in the channel box and layer editor is that all of these have resulted back to 0 and 1, as opposed to when we were creating it, it had a bunch of numbers. This is just so we can tell easy, more easily which uh, translate it is moving on when we are moving our fence. So, go ahead and hit Ctrl or Command D to duplicate, and uh, move it to the distance that you want your fence's posts separated from. All right, so I think this is about good. Maybe you want it further apart, maybe you want it closer together. I think the original picket fence is really close together, um, but in your mind, like the old country fence looks kind of far apart to me. So I'm going to say about there. And what the number you need is now is whatever number has now changed in the translate value. So this, I have moved it 2.833 inches in the negative direction. So you can either remember that number, write it down, or we can just come up into this translate box and do a control C to copy. Uh, just make sure that you are working in something else and copying something else because then you will lose the number. So now with that number selected or in our heads, we can now delete that copy because we don't need it anymore. And we can go ahead and select our picket um, and go up here to edit. And we're going to du duplicate special. What duplicate special is doing, instead of doing control D to duplicate and moving that over the 2.833 inches each time and having to do that 30 times, this is going to automatically do it for us. So what we need to do is figure out which translate these are. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and delete the one that's already in there. It will keep the information that you've entered in before. So go ahead and uh, you may need to try these out. Normally this will go X, Y, and Z just as it is here, but sometimes it doesn't do that. Or if you flipped around your um, stage sum, you should be working with Y up, but if you flipped around your stage sum, it could be going in an opposite direction. So. I'm going to enter it in here because I believe this is the X, so control V to paste, and go ahead and set the number of pickets that you want or the number of fence items that you want, and this is going to produce. I always try to do more than I actually think that I need, as then I can always delete some as of coming out and redoing this step again. So I'm going to go ahead and hit apply, and you've noticed that it has created a bunch of fence items that now I can edit. But what happens if you want some variants? I'm going to come back over to my rod iron fence. Okay. And say I wanted this to go like up, down, up, down, kind of like my demonstration one that I have here, just to give it a little bit more detail, a little bit more um, maybe real worldness. I think they actually go like up and down. Um, but we're going to do it this way. So I have my one wrought iron fence and I'm going to control D to duplicate and move it over. I'm going to move it over uh, n negative one. Let's see how that is. Uh, negative 1.5. There, negative 1.5. And then I'm going to go ahead and shrink this down. Um, so if I go to shrink this down, just now, it will shrink in both directions, and that's something that I don't want. I want to be able to keep these at the same level while just shrinking this down this way. So what I'm going to do is hold my D to move my pivot so I can move this all around, but then if I hold the V key also, you're going to notice that it turns into a circle. You need to not have it be moving at the same time, so let go of everything if it's not turning into the circle, um, and just make sure you're not clicking on anything else. So now with this selected, it's going to snap to a vertice, and the snaps automatically to the bottom because I have no other vertices there. And now if I go ahead and shrink it down, it is only shrinking in that direction, and it is not uh, coming up, so we are still level. All right, so I've got this all fine and dandy and good, um, and I'm going to come up and select them both and go edit to delete it by type, 
history, modify, freeze transformations, zeroing it out again. Now I want this one to move 0.2 past, or 0.1.5 past, right? So I'm going to do that. Um, press my W key. Should be this one is 1.5, so the next one should be duplicated to uh, negative 3. Oops. Command D to duplicate. Now move it over negative 3. zero and D to duplicate negative three so it looks right so I know that I want this to move now negative three in that direction and I'm gonna Z back or you can just delete the new ones that you created and reselect them so I'm gonna go again up to edit duplicate special go ahead and click on the pop-out box this is already in here from last time, but we don't need it. We need a negative 3 and just type that in. Um, and I'm going to leave that at 30 just because I like to go over what I think my fence would be compared to coming back. I'll go ahead and hit apply. Alright. So now we have our rod iron fence looking area. And now we need to create something for the bottom. I'm actually going to delete the sky in the end. Now we need to create something for the bottom and the thing that is going to be holding all of our uh, fence pieces together. I'm going to delete this picket one because we don't really need that. Um, it's whatever fence you're working in, so I'm just going to work in this one right for right now. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, create a cylinder for a picket fence I would normally do you know the normal 2x4 size so go ahead and do uh, your 2x4 again but I want this to get to the size that is going to be behind my fence so again I am going to have to focus and shrink this down to a pole size so, so if you're working with a picket fence it would be a 2x4 size and I am going to do E, hold J to snap two degrees, and oh, not move my timeline, so that I am completely perpendicular to my fence. And I'm going to go ahead and move that over. Okay. So now I want to make sure that this is snapped to my fence. So I'm going to go ahead and move that pivot again over here. I want it to be the one that is closest to my fence post, but not the one that is over here, because just like before when we were scaling this little guy down, uh, I wanted to just scale in that direction so that I can position where I need it over here. So I'm going to try to move this pivot point somewhere along this line so I can snap to this side of the fence and then be able to scale that direction. So we got to hold D and hold V to change to vert snap and grab one of the points that are over here. It's a little bit easier if you're working with the 2x4 size because um, there's only a few points you can snap to. Alright, so just like with moving the pivot point, we can also snap to vertices while just moving our object. So if I go, hold, go ahead and just hold down the V key, this is going to change to a circle again. And then I can snap to these vertices and I want to snap to the one that is on the side. So now I am on the side of my fence so that I have a what looks like a connection. Right? There. And then I can just go ahead and move this down to wherever I would want that bar to be at. I'm going to move it out a little bit. As long as I'm not doing the Z axis, the blue one, 
it will stay in the area that I need it to be. I'm going to do an F to focus just so I'm rotating around that one. Okay, so that's about where I want that one to be at, and I am going to scale it in that direction so we are hitting all of our fences. So I'm going to go ahead and press R to scale. Because our pivot is at the end of our bar, now when I scale in the green one, I can get to the end of this. Okay. Alright, so that looks good. We have a bar there, and now maybe you want to make some uh, concrete ground to raise this up. Normally a wrought iron fence is on something, possibly a stone wall that you could then texture later or stylize if you wanted. So go ahead and drop a cube. And I am going to oops, not that way, just scale this cube. I'm going to just make it into one by ones. And then scale the cube. My fence isn't exactly even because I deleted one. There. So I got that all scaled out and find the bottom of these guys. Cool. Then maybe I want this to come down a bit and go out so it has something even more to sit on. So I'm going to select the bottom face. So go ahead into face mode, select that bottom face, control E to extrude, extrude that down a bit, click that face, click that face, control E to extrude, pull out. So now it kind of has that step base that you will see with some rod iron fences. Cool. And now maybe I want this to break like our other fence was and have a little post. So I'm going to go ahead and just make one of those. I'm going to start with a cube and bring it on over so I can see the relative size difference. Go ahead and just bring these all to one again. And I'm going to bring it down. I'm going to vert snap with the V key. Uh, moving my vertex with V and D so that my ground plane will then snap to this ground plane. So then I can just move it over. Do R to scale it up and out. Monkey. Okay. And then uh, I want to move my pivot back, so I'm just going to go up to modify and center pivot. All right. So now I need. Uh, oops. I don't want to center pivot yet, I want to get it to the height that it needs to be. Okay. And now I will go up to modifier and center pivot. And now I can start editing like I did this one. So you can do whatever you want for the top of your pillar. You could just have it be like this. What do we want? I'm just going to create that point basically again. Um, Control E to extrude, R to scale in, and grabbing that center one. Control E to extrude. And then I can also, you can also just press the G key. That will immediately reset you into the last tool that you did. Come out. G to hit to make the tool again. Actually, maybe I want it. Maybe to create kind of like our lantern. Control E to extrude. Control 
will e to extrude r to scale. R to scale. Control B to extrude. R to scale. So I wasn't really looking at a reference for this, so uh, it doesn't look the best, but we'll work with it. Okay, so you have. Uh, funny kind of looking lantern, one over here. I'm gonna actually try and maybe scale these in a bit. Yeah. Okay, but you can make the top whatever you want. Uh, I'm gonna make this top bit into a lantern, so I am going to go ahead and select the faces in this row, because these are gonna be our lantern faces. Control E to extrude, Keep your faces together off. R to scale on in. And then I am going to hold R, hold your left click and go into component so that I'm scaling each one of the faces by themselves. So now I can make these into windows. Okay. So what we can do um, is we we'll want to edit this one first and then just copy it over there. We want to detach our window faces. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Just go into face. You already have them selected. You could also do a create selection set just like in the other fence video um, if you know you want to be editing these. Um, but we're going to go up to edit mesh detach Object mode, mesh, separate, and now our faces are all separated, and then we can shift select them and go to mesh combined, and now they are one object, and our post is one object. So now what we can do is make these into a window. So we can just select our faces and go to assign a new material, come down into the Arnold shader, and we're going to go to the AI surf standard surface. So go ahead and find your standard surface again, here, and we are going to turn down its weight, I'm going to turn down its specularity, turn up its transmission will make it see-through. I go ahead and do uh, Arnold, just drop in Sky Dome Light and open up my render view. It has now become a glass that we can see into. Let's go ahead and maybe make this have some thickness. So now we got some thickness in there into our glass or into our um, piece. Maybe you want this bigger. Okay. And then our glass we have here. Maybe we want to select them all and just move them into the center so now we can drop in a inlet maybe we'll give them some thickness control e to extrude do a 0 0.05 just giving them a bit of thickness but not too much R again, scale them in a little bit. Okay. Um, and then we want to make them bigger. So 
think I was only selecting the front face. So I just went and reselected them again. Hold down your R key component because uh, we want to have them go into our mesh just a little bit. Okay. And then we want to command D to duplicate so that we can Boolean them. Go ahead and grab your post. Whoop. In object mode, grab your post. Cannot tell if that is selected. Okay, it is. Right, so grab your post, shift, grab your glasses. Since they are all one object, it is going to stay all one object. Um, and go up to mesh, Boolean, and difference. Okay. So now it's created this little inlet in our mesh where our glass is sitting. Um, so now you can go ahead and just drop a light in there if you want to. If you had a scene where it might look up closer, we can go in here and just kind of edit a little area so that's all closed up because we can see down into our model. So I'm just going to click on this mesh and do a um, H to hide. And then I am going to bring this in. Possibly. I still seem to have a glass there. Okay. Edge. You extrude. Bring them in. Hold it down your uh, shift and your right click. Go into edge it, edges, uh, merge center. And then I go ahead and select those faces and mesh display and reverse. Woo. Face normals. Reverse normals. Okay. Well, we did not want to see that. There we go. Can I toggle you? No. Um, so we're just, I guess, going to extrude these faces up a little bit. Ooh, our mesh broke. Okay, so we're not going to do that. We're going to fill it as a hole. Put it mesh. Go up here and mesh. Fill hole. So that's reversed. Uh, my right now is not wanting to reverse just these faces. Yeah. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Um, and then maybe you want to put a uh, candle or something in there, so let's go ahead and model that candle.
So I have uh, brought back my glass there. You can just go in and find whichever one is unhighlighted and click on it and press H to bring it back. So I'm going to select all these so I don't see them. Layers, create a layer from selected and go ahead and make those invisible and now we can just start working on a candle. I have to focus to the center and let's go ahead and drop one of these guys in here. Cylinder, go ahead and make some height, make some caps, and we'll go ahead and play with the faces. Let's go ahead and hit B for soft select. Um, my soft select is super strong right now, so I'm going to go ahead and hold down B and drag it on in. Now when I hit uh, blue, select some faces in here and I can bring this on down. Can I get something? In there like a candle would be. Hold down tab to paint those center faces. Why to move down. Okay, and then I want it to maybe slump on this side. It's melting. Vertex is really high, so I'm just going to go ahead and select the vertex. Move that down in. Go ahead and object mode and hit 3. See how that looks smooth. Get it how you want it. Maybe I'm going to do that. Okay, and then maybe you want some candle drips, so go ahead and go into faces and select a few faces. Get out of soft select by pressing B. Control E to extrude. And bring it out. You want it up a little bit. Control E to extrude. And bring that out. And then do maybe a smaller one here. Now you can start to get kind of like some candle drips in there. It's going to be inside my thing anyway, so... It really doesn't need to be perfect for me. Uh, what you can do if you want to make these more sharp, go your Insert Edge Loop tool. Create an edge loop on the side of it. smooth and see how that looks. So now that really gets a sharp edge. I don't like that one. Being that close. Okay, and then go ahead and just drop a wick in maybe. And bring this edge down. Oops. You to put your tool. drop a wick in. We can do that quickly by just doing um, vertex. Grab this vertex and control E to extrude. Go into one to see what just happened. So we got a wick like that. Like I said, it's gonna, for me, it's far away. Um, or we can just 
go ahead and drop a cube. Make this super small. It's not all perfect. Maybe give this a bend deformer. to duplicate Go ahead and erase your deformer and erase the original. Rotate it a little bit and probably get it into the center there. Go ahead, do a three to smooth on your candle, or actually, sorry, keep that in one. Go up to mesh, smooth here. Go ahead, circle them both, and then mesh combined. So now they are one, but if you need to recolor this black, you can go and separate. And so then we want to create something like a flame at the top. So go ahead and maybe let's do a sphere. Bring it on up. Make it about the size that you want your flame to be at. Okay. And then we can do a soft select, so go into B and let me select some faces and I'll just pull this up you know, just deform it a little bit <laughs> maybe that's way too large I'll scale it down you know, something like that and then we can combine all that. Mesh combined, so now we can move it and bring back our fence. Way too big. Scale it on down. And there you go. And then we can light it and you can color it all you want. So next we'll light it up. Okay. <laughs>